Hello all you spacefarers. I'm King Link and I'm bringing you a last look and review of Starbound. Now this one's going to go a little fast because there's a lot to say and I don't want this to be a 30 minute review. So let's get started. Um, minor spoiler warnings on the game. I will talk about the early gameplay but it's essential to talk about it with this game. I'm not going to talk about the story so much but I will talk about what you have to do on the early quests. About 4 out of maybe 12. So to start with... I'm coming from this game with the uh, experience playing about 50 hours of Terraria, and I enjoy Terraria a lot. So when Ty uh, left Terraria and formed Chucklefish, I was curious, uh, and a lot of people were, since he was talking about a sci-fi uh, Terraria. So I've been following this game for a while. Um, I'm pronouncing his name Ty. If I'm wrong, I apologize. It's spelled T-I-Y uh, and is... Twitter is T-I-Y-U-R-I, I believe. So, anyways, in addition, this isn't the first time I tried to play the game. I played it almost a year ago, right before it went out of early access, you know, officially launched, and I found the state the game was in at the time not great. But I didn't know that the almost finished version of the game I was looking for was on the Unstable branch, so I returned it at the time. Um, no ill will, you know, I understand launch... But uh, it's time to take another look today. So, to start with, Terraria, uh, Starbound looks a lot like Terraria. And that's understandable. Ty was a sprite artist on Terraria, and he stuck with that style that he knew. Now, copying someone else's art style isn't always the best, and I think there's some problems there. But that's not what's going on here. This is his style, um, and it works. You know, it's excellent. The sprite style that he uses gives a lot of variety that can be done in a game. There's seven playable races, and they all have different styles and looks and building styles, you know, architecture and all. It's a good achievement, and I love looking at the various outfits um, for each race. So, the big thing that Starbound kind of brings to the table is it's more story-based and it's more request-based than Terraria. And the story begins suddenly, as you can see in my first look video from before. I'll try to link it in the description. Um, what happens in it is you're graduating from, uh, from, from the Protectorate, or kind of with them, um, to the next tier. And you're going to get your Matter Manipulator. This is the big item that every graduate gets. It sounds good, of course. But uh, at the same time, it's a video game. Tragedy strikes. Pretty much all of Earth is destroyed. Um... My understanding is you can't go back to it ever, but basically a tentacle monster pops out. You flee the planet with an AI, and you find yourself on a random world. Now, there is an issue here. The game doesn't teach you nearly enough. You learn how to fight and dig in that first level, but crafting upgrades and different ca crafting stations aren't mentioned. The game has an opportunity to give you a few lessons at the beginning, but doesn't take it, and it makes it so new players to these types of games are lost until they go and look at a guide or go online for more help. It's a shame, because now we have a great quest system, um, and honestly the quest system in this game is pretty good, but it ends up not being used to its fullest. This could have been the, the opportunity to teach the players how to play Starbound before graduation and having some class, um, basically like uh, Fallout 3, but instead the quest system's not used anyway in the tutorial. You just go to the end and you get your weapon. Shame. So, you escape on a ship and you now have wound up on a random planet. Now, that's important here. You go to a planet that's a lush forest world. At least that's where I ended up in all three ga uh, games, or all three players technically, that I started in this game. But they're, they were all three different worlds. Different name, different place in the universe, different um, solar system that they were in, you know, different distances to the first goal that it asks you to do, which is uh, finding an energy source. So I like the idea of randomness in games, and Starbound does it well. The game doesn't seem to help you find an optimal planet, so you'll and you always get a random one instead. And there's a lot of variety there. Honestly, though, that's a good thing. I like the idea that this is my story, not. A story that everyone else has done. So from there, you get a quest to find an energy source on the planet, like I mentioned. Eventually, you get to the energy source and you find like a little tablet for you to do do something with. And then from there, the game wants you to find 
the core of the world to get 20 core fragments. Overall, it's a good early quest, but there's a problem here. There's more teaching that should have happened here. You see, you aren't taught about crafting directly or wood platforms. You find out both of these uh, um, probably from online or some way else. But there are essential lessons. If you don't know how to make platforms, you might just find a very easy trip to the core and an impossible trip back out. Instead, what you're given is a generic quest to go find some items. It's just a learning system. And like I said, you now have a quest system. They're not using it to the full potential. So digging to the center of the earth is a hard challenge. And what makes it especially hard in Starbound, other than just the random design of the world, is the combat. Combat in Starbound is similar to Terraria, but there's a health bar now for the opponents, and that's great. Overall, it is a good experience, but the real problem becomes the enemies are too damn hard at the beginning, and even once you start to get the mastery of the system and better gear, it becomes incredibly repetitive. It's a shame because Starbound keeps pushing you towards the combat because it so uh, often occurs, and has some relatively good ideas. You'll see on the planets I visit, I find random enemies, and they're procedurally generated, which is cool. I don't know what I'm going to find on the next planet, and that's exciting, especially when you're talking about a randomly generated world. Sadly though, the enemies are just annoying, and they actually kill me at least twice in this video. That's kind of crap. It's not crap that they can beat me, but it, you can see the speed I die is very fast, and the combat's just challenging to really get the right feel for. The game pushes exploration quite heavily, but the combat is either annoying or monotonous depending on how good your gear is and how good your skill is. So, anyways, eventually you find the core fragments, the 20 of them that they've asked for, and you somehow have gotten back to the surface through some manner. Um, great. You can then use the energy source that the game has sent you to, and you open a teleport. From there, you go to what's uh, known as the outpost. And that's just a hub area, but it's also where you get your main quest from. I'm skipping a little story here, just so that I'm not spoiling anyone, but from there you get your first adventure map. It's to fix your ship, you basically need to get a giant crystal from a special map. Now, the adventure maps are interesting. They're essentially static maps. You aren't allowed to damage them or dig in them, you can't destroy anything, you can't blow up walls, but they're made in a, almost a platformer level. They have the same enemies every time, but usually a lot less than uh, normal worlds, at least in my opinion. And a simple quest, but it usually ends with a boss. All of this is excellent. I really enjoy them. And the thing is, I find it odd because I'm trading off the feeling that I'm the first person visiting a world for a standardized map. Still, the adventure maps are, do work. So after you beat the map, the game opens up and you're fle free to... Uh, explore the entire universe. It's really on you where you want to go. There's millions of planets and galaxies and you can see some of that early on in this video that was the world map. From there you can go anywhere and travel where you want. The teleporter on your ship can actually send you to any other teleporter you've seen or any flag you've placed so you don't have to worry about how far you move and you get the freedom for exploration. That's, that's a nice uh, feature and it's something that some people would have forgotten here it's a major feature and it allows you to never worry about having to go back to where you originally were or where your outposts are or um you know your colonies that you build yourself so that's a really nice addition now there are many different worlds and the game allows you to go anywhere you want um there are different difficulties for planets and the game seems to generate them uh so somewhat randomly but you'll get s some for each system but it's really about the combat and how dangerous the world is is the difficulty for the planet you can see i go to uh, risky worlds here which is about tier three is my understanding the game does allow you to craft new armor and there's a limited number of weapons to help you out but the thing is the idea is to explore the world's worlds and gather the resources and then follow the quests at the same time, the weapons, um, I found that completing quests got me good weapons, at least on par of what I could build. The armor is a little bit harder to come by, and for those, I found that I had to um, run the levels. 
or uh, build it myself rather. So, the universe and world map is actually really good. And the fact that it can go anywhere and it only costs 100 fuel, which isn't that much in the scheme of things, about uh, 5 to 10 minutes will get you a full tank of like a thousand fuel. So, 100 fuel to go anywhere in the galaxy is a fantastic deal. Uh, I wish we had that uh, in real life because you could go straight across to any planet you want. But anyways, this is where the game starts to have problems though. You see the quest that the game gives you. It's called uh, Finding the Florins. Now, the Florins are found on the forest planet. I'm going to jump ahead for a second and in the video I'm actually searching for the second group called the Hylodal. Not sure how it's uh, actually pronounced, but it's spelt H-Y-L-O-T-L. And they're found on ocean planets, as you see. Now, I do find what I'm looking for, and I got really lucky here. This is the fourth ocean, uh, fourth ocean world I've looked in, and there's no clue where their world were, or if a world has an outpost. Maybe all of them do, but I just couldn't find them on the first four. And I got lucky here. I, I mean, really, it's a lot of luck. Um... So the universe and world map is good, as I said, but the problem is they don't tell you anything about the outposts. And when you're trying to find it in the giant map, you do know what type of world you need to go to, but it's not telling you if you have a chance on a special place. So it's kind of an open-ended quest. Now, when you do find the Hylodal or the Florins, and eventually you'll do other um, races, I'm sure, I then have to scan, and in the video you'll see it a little bit. Uh, I turn on the scanner and some objects appear green, some appear blue, and some appear orange. You have to try to scan those green objects to get credit. It's kind of a pain in the butt, and for the Florins, I had a situation where I found a huge village, about 10 to tw uh, 12, maybe even 20 houses, uh, as well as tree houses, you know, a ton of area to explore. It only got me 90% of the way through the quest. And I had scanned everything in that village at least two to three times. Didn't get it. That last 10% I had to go hunting for. And that meant I had to go to another world. It ended up taking me three more worlds before I found another outpost. It's just not that fun to keep hunting for these things without knowing if you're close to them. So, eventually you will find the scans. And you will go off to the next adventure map. For the Florins, you get the hunting ground. For the Hylodal, um, you might see it in this video, you get the library. Now, I need to talk about difficulty here. In my first run, I got stuck on the hunting grounds. I couldn't win, and I ended up finally giving up. Basically, I lost all my goods at a point in the level, and I felt that I did not have the goods to get back to that point in the level due to the fact that I lost my uh, healing supplies and everything else. So I had given up the game, and I looked at the difficulty options. Now, the, on normal, it's called survival, and you lose all, you drop most of your items. It's kind of a kick in the crotch when you die. Um, not everything is dropped, but a lot is, and I've actually seen some of it go into uh, lava where I couldn't get it back. Overall, it's just not fun to have to go get everything back, and the enemies respawn, and if you're on a uh, non if you're not on a adventure map, you basically could have many more enemies or just a different path that you have to take. Overall, I'm not a fan. So on, there's another option called casual where you drop nothing and the penalties are significantly weaker. I also believe it is a slightly easier. Personally, I think that should have been the default and the survival should have been an add-on or a additional difficulty because survival actually has a couple points that they could do. There's hunger, there's drop all items, and then there's a 30% penalty for money instead of 10%. Um, each of those could have been an add-on, but that's the opposite of what they did. They made survival seem like it's the normal difficulty. In addition, there's the hardcore mode, one death, no thanks. N not the way that I die in this game. So I restarted the game in casual. Now, all quests take about one to two hours a piece. And even on casual, with really good luck and placement, I still had a long time to get back to where I was. I did, I beat the hunting ground, and I found it a bit easier. 
Um, I think my gear might have been slightly better, but I, like I said, I think casual is slightly easier in some other way. So I beat it. I moved on to the next quest, which was find the high lodal that we had been talking about. As you see, I found them, and this also took a while. But here's the thing. I realized I wasn't having that much fun. My problem is Starbound isn't clear with what it wants to be. I feel at times that it wants to be a space version of Terraria, and that could be fine with colony building and structures. That's good. But Terraria does exist and has bosses and more. Starbound instead tries to tell a story, and that's fine because Terraria's big flaw is there's no story, just random events, and the bosses and the enemies have no real connection. Then Starbound steps up also and says it wants to do exploration and searching for stuff, so your buildings are suddenly even less important, and that's an issue. The building seems like a major part, and fans seem to like it, but in reality, the game keeps wanting you to go somewhere else or farm for ore or such, so it's not a permanent building. You're going to have to keep making these structures if you want to keep having a structure that you can call home. Otherwise, you have to keep transferring worlds. Of course, then there's the combat. I'm not really a big fan of it, as I said, and honestly, the amount of it in uh, Starbound makes me think that it wants to be an action-adventure game. But it's trying to do all four of these things, building, story, exploration, and combat, and it doesn't do any of those significantly better than those who have came before. I kind of am bagging on Starbound, and yeah, I am. But it sucks because Starbound does a lot for the genre, and I think it's uh, we need to talk about a few more things. I've been a little bit, um, I've said a few good things about it, but here's some real strong uh, pieces of it. You see, there's a mech suit that I believe I used in the video early on, and it's really solid when it's used in outer space, but then you drop it on a planet, and it, while it does feel overpowered, it has limited battery life, but you use it for like digging for minerals and causing a lot of damage with it uh, against enemies if you need it. The combat with guns also works here. Now, I rarely switch between ranged and melee in the game, but Starbound had me mix them very often. I even have two revolvers and two daggers that you'll see for this character, and I felt like a bit like a cowboy, which I'm supposed to as a Nova Kid and a rogue. I don't normally play dual wielding classes in either style, but it works extremely well here. Now, the race, the upgrades, the racial buildings, and the architecture are fantastic, and I have to say I love the look on the Wikipedia and seeing the racial costumes for what I could get. The glitch actually used like a medieval style, which is really interesting. Um, as you saw, the Hylodal has kind of like a rave club, and that's just more of their personal style rather than a um, something every race will do. So, it's a shame that it was so hard to craft any of the sets because I really like the style in the game. The diverse world and the randomness is also excellent. This is a game that truly embraces the idea of randomness, and it, it it's, and while it does hurt the game itself, I think the different planets are great, and the fact that eh, the fact that every planet has different enemies is amazing. I don't believe I saw the same enemy more than once, um, and it's great that you go to different planets of the same type, and they even change the enemies, and that randomness really pays off. There is some unique enemies that will appear more than once, but they're special cases, not the standard. Every planet seems to have at least uh, four t different enemy types, which is great. And then finally, the outposts and people are great to play with. You know, I just wish there could have been more to the outpost than a stopping point. Um, I wanted the story to have me build a small colony, maybe 20 people, and have random events happening or something. It would have incentivized the building that people play these games for, but it's not here, and that's a shame. The thing is, with all the good that I'm talking about, I wanted to really like Starbound, but I've realized that it's second in so many categories. I think Terraria does slightly better with building, or at least giving it meaning or the purpose of the game, because you stay in one area and there. Portal Knights, for all its problems, has better progression. Combat isn't really in the running because I'm not a big fan of it. I do like the minute to minute combat, but the hour to hour amount of it is, a, is an issue in my book. And the story 
is lacking outside of a very few moments. Um, it just doesn't have a ton of story, but at least it has an attempt at story. That, that's the thing. Because I have all those issues, I have a problem recommending Starbound. I get why people enjoy it, of course, but I feel like it's I'm too much of a hamster running on a wheel to get something ha to happen. Two hours between meaningful moments kind of sucks. The re combat just really puts me off my game here. If it wasn't for the amount of combat that the game required, I might have played more. Now, I know there's mods, but I refuse to justify a game because mods fix problems with it. I didn't find the mod that I really wanted to play with, but the issue is if I look at a game as the developers are offering it, I can tell you what you're going to get. It's great that you can change it or make it whatever you want out of it, and it is an improvement, but it would be dishonest to tell you that Skyrim is the best game ever because these 27 mods fix all the issues. Skyrim has a lot of issues, and I have to blame the developers at some point. It's wrong to do the same here. It would be wrong to say that this is a game I recommend because there's a specific mod that fixes everything for me. I didn't don't know what that mod would be, but personally, I'm not doing that anyways. So, I can't recommend Starbound. And it means, ultimately, I have to give it a score of 2 out of 5. I get the love completely. I understand why some people are diehard fans of this game. I just don't personally enjoy it that much myself. And I don't think I can really tell someone else to grab it, while there are other games that are significantly better out there. You know, I'm sorry, Chucklefish. But still, thanks for publishing Stardew Valley and other games. And you know what? This isn't the worst game. It's actually kind of fun, it's just not something I can give a high score to. So, that's Starbound, and I'm out of here. This is King Link. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. If you want to see more, consider subscribing. It helps you get my content, and helps me show that there's interest in my content, and that's a good thing for both of us. Feel free to leave a comment letting me know what, what's on your mind, what you think of Starbound, or anything else. For more information and the full review, check the description or check my site at kinglink-reviews.com. And I'll see you next time.